On behalf of the entire research team, I'd like to thank the conference organizers for this opportunity to present results from a randomized trial of an HIV self-testing intervention in Kenya. I have no disclosures, and I welcome questions at the following email address. HIV self-testing can overcome a number of barriers to testing and is being taken to scale in several countries with high HIV prevalence. As for approaches to implement self-testing in such a way that it increases testing coverage among those who do not already seek testing, secondary distribution of self-tests by some individuals to others in their social or sexual networks is especially promising. In recent years, provision of multiple self-tests to women at antenatal clinics and to female sex workers, for example, has resulted in higher rates of partner and couples testing. However, the potential for this approach to serve as an HIV prevention strategy for women in Sub-Saharan Africa has not been assessed. So the objectives of our study were to determine whether provision of multiple self-tests on an ongoing basis to high-risk HIV-negative women resulted in higher partner and couples testing, facilitated safer sexual behavior, and reduced their risk of acquiring HIV. The Jikinge study a cluster randomized trial, was conducted in 66 pair-matched geographical clusters in Siaya County, Kenya. Approximately 30 women were enrolled in each cluster, and key eligibility criteria included being 18 years or older, confirmed HIV negative status, and self-reporting two or more sexual partners in the past month. Clusters were randomized to an intervention or control group. In intervention clusters, participants received five self-tests at enrollment and additional tests at approximately three-month intervals. In addition to initial training on self-test use, participants were encouraged to offer self-tests at their discretion to current and potential partners with whom unprotected sex was likely. In control clusters, participants were given referral cards that encouraged individuals to seek clinic-based testing at nearby venues. It's worth noting here that we used a cluster randomized trial design to reduce the likelihood that participants in the intervention group would share self-tests with participants in the control group. Following enrollment, HIV testing and structured follow-up surveys were conducted at six-month intervals for up to 24 months. The primary outcome was HIV incidence, and secondary outcomes included partner testing among participants' primary and non-primary partners, couples testing with those partners, sexual behavior, identification of HIV-positive partners, and intimate partner violence. HIV incidence was analyzed using mixed effects Cox proportional hazards models, while most secondary outcomes were analyzed with unadjusted generalized linear models. Turning to the results, we enrolled 2,090 participants between May 2017 and August 2018. Participants had a mean age of 27 years, 64% were married, and 15% reported sex work as a primary income source. Follow-up with participants was completed in March 2020, and the mean follow-up duration was 19.1 months. Retention rates exceeding 85% were achieved at each of the six monthly study visits. During the course of the study, participants in the intervention group received an average of 16.8 self-tests. They reported providing nearly half of these self-tests to their sexual partners, and they themselves used nearly as many self-tests. At each of the six monthly follow-up visits, participants in the intervention group reported significantly higher primary partner testing than the control group. 70 to 80 percent of participants in the intervention group reported their primary partner tested in the past six months. The findings for couples testing were similar. Over all follow-up visits, the estimated effect of the intervention was a 35 percentage point increase in partner testing in the past six months, and a 45 percentage point increase in couples testing in the past six months. Our study also obtained information from participants on over 11,000 recent transactional sex encounters. In these encounters as well, partner testing and couples testing rates were higher in the intervention group than the control group, although the levels for each outcome were lower than they were for primary partners. This slide reports results for several additional secondary outcomes we studied. First, 
Over the entire study duration, the intervention group identified significantly more HIV-positive sexual partners per participant than the control group. Second, we found only modest changes in sexual behavior due to the intervention. At six months, the intervention group was more likely to report condom use with one or more partners who tested HIV positive or declined testing, but no such difference was observed at 12 to 24 months. Finally, at each follow-up, incidence of any IPV in the past six months was similar in intervention and control groups. For our primary outcome of HIV incidence, we recorded a total of 34 incident HIV infections during the study, 19 cases in 1,531 person years in the intervention group, and 15 cases in 1,616 years in the control group. HIV incidence was not significantly different between the intervention and control groups. In conclusion, this study shows that high-risk women in Kenya were able to distribute self-tests to their sexual partners. Also, the provision of multiple self-tests to women over a 24-month period led to increased awareness of sexual partners' HIV status, higher couples testing, and greater identification of HIV-positive partners. However, there was only a modest reduction in unprotected sex with partners of unknown status, and there was no effect of the intervention on HIV incidence. So to summarize, this approach can support achievement of the UNAIDS 95-95-95 targets, but additional HIV prevention interventions remain necessary for women at high risk of HIV infection. I'd like to acknowledge funding from the National Institutes of Health and thank many people, including my co-investigators and collaborators on this study, research assistants, community leaders, DSMB members, and most importantly, the study participants. Thank you.